So, uh, VTubing for Beginners, a getting started guide to virtual avatars. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about using a virtual avatar or VTubing to replace a webcam on your stream. I recommend this to people who aren't comfortable using a camera or who are just interested in finding alternative ways to express themselves. If you're unfamiliar with the term VTube, it comes from virtual YouTuber, which is where the trend first started in the form of channels whose front personality is a virtual character. Some channels will roleplay as this character include a backstory, and others will just use the character as a replacement for a webcam. So, what are the components of, v of a VTuber rig? There are two main aspects to a full virtual avatar for both 2D and 3D, modeling and rigging. Um, modeling is the process of creating the base static model. In this context, rigging is the process of setting up movement, defi defining how the model will deform when you move. In a media production line, the rigger would offhand the fully rigged mo model to an animator, but in VTubing, the animation comes from your tracking software. Uh, when looking to commission a model of someone, be aware that these two stages are often separated, so some people will offer one but not the other, whereas others will offer both. Bye Hippo, thank you for being here. So, what are the options, the benefits and drawbacks of 2D and 3D models? So generally, there are two kinds of models that people will use. A 2D model, which is created from a still illustration, this is the kind I use, that's been separated into lots of pieces. The more layers, the higher the degree of movement, the more 3D the model will appear. One of the benefits is that you can keep a hand-drawn illustrative style, like in the cartoons or anime. And you can also define every part of the movement so there aren't any unexpected physics or the model breaking. You can attach model animations, such so as waving, to different gestures so that they will play when you make a gesture in real life. A 3D model gives a larger degree of motion. You can turn it 360 degrees as well as track hands and feet, one to one. And so those can also be used in virtual reality for games like VRChat or Beat Saber, as well as your stream. Okay, 2D avatars. Program is live 2D to create them. So I'll cover some cheap options, some expensive options, and some free options. So. Cheaper options! The first two options are PNG tubing and simple avatars. So often you'll see VTubers that use two still images or PNG tubing instead of a full model. These are sound activated and I've included a tutorial in the resources section if you'd like to set this up for yourself. People that plan on using a fully tracked model will sometimes just use two images of their character design as their model is being created. Commissioning two flat images is significantly cheaper than an illustration that's cut up for rigging. If you wanted more than that, some riggers will price according to which parts of the face they will add movement to. If you look on Fiverr, you can see the pricing tiers of live 2D rigging increase with added movement. If you're on a budget, you can skip the higher tiers of movement and just have the eyes and the mouth move. So the chicken um, is a simplified model that I created which doesn't include eyeball tracking, mouth shape, or distinction between the body and the head movements. The model's entire body is moved by the face in two directions and three angles of rotation with eye blinking and the mouth opening and shutting, that's it. There's also physics on the body and head feathers. In total, it was about three hours work for me to make. So on the bottom is the before and after model of my friend who first had partial rigging and now has full rigging on the same artwork, so you can see the difference. So on the right is her new model, she was really happy to get that. <laughs> now she can move properly. But before, it was a good stand-in for before she could have full tracking, uh, rigging, sorry, not tracking. So, expensive options, commissioning a full model. Depending on the complexity, a good live 2D model could set you back anywhere from 500 pounds to 10 grand. Um, art can be commissioned separately, but the artist needs to be familiar with the rigging process so that the layers can be separated appropriately. Uh, I've struggled with this before because I've rigged somebody else's art and found that the art has not been separated correctly, so they've needed to go back to the artist and get them to redo it. All parts of the art need to be drawn, including parts that might be covered most of the time by another part. Uh, art is expensive and should be treated as a luxury, so make sure you have the funds before you approach an artist. I'll go over how to find someone to commission later on in this presentation. Price range on rigging is more to do with the level of movement rather than how detailed the art is. For example, the commission I created for Vixie has over 150 plus layers despite the art being relatively simple, so that's the fox. Um, this is because she has a lot of accessories and many separate pieces 
of fur on the ears, cheeks, body to look fluffy. The three models shown are all models I've rigged myself and have had hundreds of layers to work from. Uh, free options, free life to need rigs. Often kind artists and riggers will provide free to use assets as part of their personal study. People can often do, people also often do raffles to win a fully rigged model. So keep an eye out on Twitter for these. You can search keywords such as free life 2D in the search bar, which I did and came up with this one. Free 2D tracking software such as Life 2D or PLPL Live often include example models that I've seen other, stre other people stream with. Make sure you check the TOS on these before you use them. Another free option, do it yourself! Lastly, if you're artistically inclined and don't want to pay someone else, you can do what I did and many other people have done and teach yourself how to bring an illustration to life. There are lots of great resources on YouTube along with the official documentation which I've included in the resources section. My friend, who taught herself without any prior knowledge of anything except how to draw, she took about 30 hours of study to learn the software from start to finish. This gives you a lot of freedom to develop your own style and create something very unique. I've had lots of compliments on my current model about how it's so different to others and I'm able to make changes and I see fit without needing a middleman. And this was back in my earlier creation process for my latest model that I've not I've not started using yet, but here's an update. It's me track using put it in the chat. Me using her with the camera. So she she's a lot more she has a lot more degree of movement than my old model, which I use at the moment. Next I will cover 3D avatars. So free options, Vroid. Vroid Studio is the go-to option for people looking to create their own 3D model for free. You can use the model in VTubing or in games such as VRChat. Uh, I've spent some, some time myself trying to replicate my 2D model in Vroid for research and everything can be created in program except for the accessories, so clothes and things, but there are lots of um, free ones that come with it. But also uh, there are lots of free or cheap um, accessories on the Japanese virtual marketplace booth, which I've linked in the resources tab. They are literally a couple of pounds and you can buy something for your Vroid avatar. Um, it's designed to be beginner friendly and you can edit everything inside the program. And so you can draw the textures inside the program. So if you look in the bottom left, that's me trying to replicate my model. I didn't do the header. <laughs> Cheap options, pre-made models. If you don't feel comfortable customizing a Vroid model yourself, there are lots of people willing to do it for you for an affordable price. So if you look to Etsy and Fiverr for sellers offering to create and customize models for you uh, from model creation programs, you'll be able to find a lot. So here's an example that I pulled after like five seconds of looking. I think that work is quite nice. Okay, slide 12, expensive options, commissioning a full model. Lastly, some artists will offer to create a 3D model fully from scratch. This will set you back several thousand pounds, but everything will be fully optimized for your model regarding tracking. And the example of the faces are the faces that PB Production has created for these VTubers with their names. Um, with unique topology, topology in 3D modeling refers to the way the vertices are arranged. So you can see they're all different um, on each face depending on what the face looks like. So you won't have that same flexibility in Vroid. And then on the right is Vuga Bear's 2D and 3D models side by side, created by the same artist. You can see the difference, which is pretty cool. So, there's a 2D model maker, I feel like the range of motion and could have been pushed a lot more in the 2D model to match the 3D one. Motion capture software, 2D and 3D. So I've included the names of some popular motion capture software that you can use to track your VTuber. I've tested out the first three with my live 2D models and VTube Studio offers the most flexibility and calibration so that's the one I recommend. You can pay a one-time fee on Steam to remove the watermark which is under £20. And then the, the three examples on the bottom are softwares that people use for 3D. I don't personally have a 3D model so I haven't tested them out but you can if that's something you're interested in, you can have a look. Okay, designing your VTuber, this is a fun part. 
Uh, VTubing is an opportunity to fully express yourself creatively. If you can imagine it, someone can rig it. You can literally do anything. It's great. So, again, back to Pinterest. Um, you only need to search for a few images and then it'll start recommending stuff. So this is the Pinterest board I created with Lexi's help. Actually, Lexi's here. I wasn't expecting her to be here, but she's here. And she studied fairy mythology as part of her degree. And so she had a lot of knowledge to share with me. So she helped me put together this board for inspiration. So we broke it down into separate sections for assets and then for the design of the model. You can take inspiration from anywhere. You can look at characters you like in media. You can look at other VTubers. You can base your model on literally anything. I've seen a lamp VTuber and I've seen a model that was entirely in pixel art style. I think it looks fantastic. Really, if you can imagine it, you can do it. Okay. So as part of the design process, you can create a character reference sheet. This is the character sheet my friend Yuna put together. I mentioned him before. Um, for his VTuber, he's included details for anyone looking to draw fan art, including colors. If you're commissioning, um, if you commission a design, a character design of someone, they'll hand you a reference sheet like this. So then, then you can show that to other artists, uh, such as those creating models or illustrations. Okay, lore videos. If you like, you can create lore for your character too as an additional form of self-expression and advertising for your channel. So, we can watch a bit of this one. Our story begins following our hero, a kind and adventurous soul. Oh, Ready I can't full screen it. Okay. Oh, not her. I'm talking about him. Huh? Um, will you be accepting the quest, sir? Uh, don't you have anything else? Like, like, slaying a dragon, or killing a giant minotaur! Uh, the only an Iron Ringed Adventure. I'm not sure if you can handle- What do you mean? I could totally take a high-level quest. As you can see, he's not the smartest of people. In fact, huh? he's rather- what? what do you mean, not the smartest? You couldn't kill a fly. Huh? Why don't you come down here and fight me then, huh? I can't. I'm a voice. I'm literally in your head, rent free. Oh yeah? That's an excuse. Come here and fight me, you coward! <laughs> He had a lot of fun creating this, um, and I think it added a lot of personality to his channel, um, being able to show this to people. And I, re I really like Bows. Um, this is what she did for her debut. She went full anime. けど、最近ね、何回も何回も歌ったって、誰もそれに歌ってくれないの。私の声がまるで波に飲まれたみたい。And then it leads into in an original song that she she sung, which is pretty great. Um, and then Dariku, I think she's probably done the most elaborate law. Also gone full anime. I think she illustrated it all herself as well. That's pretty, it's pretty cool. This is a really good way to express your creativity, if that's something you're interested in. And I think, because I remember when she first, um, before her debut, she was streaming to, I guess like, just partner numbers? And then after, she was streaming to like thousands of people. Um, just because she advertised it, advertised so well with this stuff. She did a really good job for her channel. Oh my god, no, next! No, next! Our story. Next! Okay. <laughs> How to find somebody co to commission. So since doing a few commissions, I've had a lot of inquiries from streamers who like the work I've made after seeing it used on other channels. Um, when looking for someone to commission, you can look for the credits of who created models that you like. Be aware that there are a lot of bot accounts out there whose owners will use stolen artwork to advertise with, and they will sell and trace artwork or use free assets, so you will get scammed. Make sure their commissions are open and have enough money on hand before you submit a request to a, le a legitimate artist. Yeah, really, really examine the portfolios, make sure that you're not gonna- This is really important, some of you were saying how um, you're interested in commissioning emotes. This is so common with emotes. You have to be very careful. There's a, a commander root tool um, that you can use to see if the emotes on your channel match anyone else's. 
that's a really good way to check if you've got stolen artwork or if someone's stealing your artwork. Um, okay, so you can look at content creators that you like on Twitter. They'll include their models, quote unquote, parents in the description. Uh, so if you see Vienna's, she's got her mother and her father. So that's the artist and the rigger. Um, you can also look on their Twitch channels directly as the credits will usually be in the panels or as a command on the channel. So I think Fixie on her channel. Yeah, I know Fixie on her channel. If she does exclamation mark model, it points to me. Um, searching commissions open on my own Twitter brought up the endless list on the right. Not all of these are art commissioners. So some of these artists offer model commissions. So only some of these are offering model commissions. Make sure you check what kind of commission, obviously. Um, and if they have commissions open, their work will be linked on their Twitter. Somewhere, obviously, maybe in the pinned post or maybe in their description. Um, how to compose a commission inquiry. So some artists will only want to work with you if you can provide a character reference sheet because they won't offer design as part of the work. Others may be happy to do the character design with you, but in that case, giving lots of example images of hair, accessories, clothes, etc. will be invaluable as an artist. If you're able to, then drawing a messy scribble with stick figures is better than nothing at all if you need to illustrate something specific. Riggers need your file in a PSD format, that's a Photoshop file, and for it to be separated correctly. Some riggers may ask you to return to the artist if the art is separated suboptimally, so that's something I had to do as a rigger. Check to see how the artist wants you to contact them before you reach out. They may have a website, a Google form, a business email, some people work through Twitter DMs, I've personally got an FAQ on my stream, and a business email for people who have additional questions. Yet despite this, some people will still talk to me directly, even though they can find their answers otherwise, uh, other, other places, and so that does waste time for both of us, so you can avoid that very easily. Closing notes. So creatively, you can do as much or as little as you like. Some people like to create content in character, whereas others just use the model as a replacement for their webcam and nothing more. Personally, my first few models were just the latter, but my next one will have lore videos as additional content for fun. Consider that a VTuber avatar is an investment, and generally the higher quality you're comfortable paying for, the more viewers you will enjoy looking at your channel. I've seen some unappealing models on people's streams, so keep in mind that like any other stream asset, it needs to enhance your stream's content. Lastly, a VTuber model might help with click-through rate, but being engaging is still the most important aspect for viewer retention. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If anyone has anything else to add or share that I may have missed, please feel free to do so. And also, if anyone has any questions, let me know. And that is it. Thank you for watching.